Hi, I'm Tony LaRussa and welcome to Tony LaRussa Baseball 3. In creating Tony LaRussa Baseball 3, Stormfront has one wonderful advantage and that is we have access to Tony LaRussa himself. About four years ago was the first time we ever came down here on the field at uh, the Oakland Coliseum when we first started working with Tony LaRussa. He spent a tremendous amount of time helping us build the computer manager in the game, which really is based upon his perspective and the way he runs a team. My job is to coordinate the effort and to make sure that the pieces come together in an appropriate way. It is not the number of computers you have in the office. It is not the sophistication of the silicon graphics workstation we use that gives us our power. It is the artistry of the human beings who do the projects. And then the equipment is what allows them to do it. We have architects, modelers, illustrators, animators, interface designers, graphic designers. Uh, Michael and I are the modelers on this project. and. Uh, we are primarily responsible for setting the architecture up. These are all different kind of sorts of blueprints from architects, from the stadiums. AutoCAD is where the, the project starts. We, we model the whole stadium using all different sources. And this is Wrigley Field. And this is what we call a wireframe, which shows the stadium in three dimensions, but no uh, textures or faces. You can see the, uh, the bottom green portion here is lower stands, these are upper stands, this is the roof. To get the model from Bill and Michael, we start creating the real look environment. We're assigning textures and we put in dugouts and the grass and the scoreboard and the clock, trying to make it look as close to reality as possible. Typically when we have blueprints, they don't show you some of the finer details that you'd normally see when you're watching the game. You can see that the panels have a lot of little wrinkles in them, but they're actually very tiny panels, yet the ones above are wide. So you'd assume that these panels were uniform, but obviously they're not. We want to make sure that it's there, somebody who's familiar with the stadium. Well, after we model the stadium, we go back in and um, find whatever kind of reference we have and create a flat image of the city which is just applied uh, behind the stadium and just give the illusion that there's a city behind the stadium. Basically when it comes from Bill and them, at that point just go in and illustrate it with the details, make it look realistic. I know this ballpark personally because I'm a proud Oakland boy so this is a sentimental favorite of mine. When I was a kid I used to run across this trying to catch the, uh, the uh, home runs. Uh, and my brother and I got into a fight right about there. <laughs> but these kind of details make me proud because, um, you know, it just makes it look a lot more authentic. The artists put in a tremendous amount of work, and at the end, they want you not to realize that you're looking at art. They want you to feel that you're out there at the ball game. But you can't imagine the amount of artistry that is required to accomplish that. Well, don't forget about us, though. I mean, if we don't put the animations in right, then the whole thing's going to look like hell. You're getting all the credit. <laughs> I mean, if the guy throws in the wrong direction, he looks dumb. So, I mean, uh, we, we do have to do a lot of work to get the timing right and uh, to make it feel right in the game. You get a, an outline of the stadium where uh, I can write a program that will read through it line by line and figure out exactly where the wall is relative to home plate using this uh, kind of slice of the stadium. When the ball is hit, we can see where it goes foul, if it's in the foul ground, or where it clears the upper wall for home runs. So that's programmed into the game, so we're, we're very accurate. If you're playing one team, the view can switch from behind the batter to behind the pitcher, whether you're uh, batting or pitching. This view here is particularly pretty. It gives you a real sense of dimension and depth in the stadium. The animations in Tony La Russa 3 do take a quantum leap forward in terms of their detail and polish. We decided to go after video-based animations. We went out and we got professional ball players and then shoot them in front of blue screen uh, or out on the ball field. I think there are going to be some 
animations that you're just not going to be able to reproduce in a studio situation. You have to be out on the field for that. And frankly, it's more real than uh, straight video or, or photography would be. It's sharper, you see more detail, uh, it's a more satisfying visual experience. When we film, we have the script to go by and uh, it's all scripted out so that each movement or each each frame will have keyframes that everything else is connected to and it has to work in the chain like that. I'll actually go through frame by frame and actually try to find the right frames for, for making the motion look correct. This is like the final process. This is where we clean up. And so you can tell that the edges are kind of rough here and there. And we also need to get the right palette so that we can place the right team colors and the skin tones and just fine tune it. This has been pretty much cleaned up. And what I've done is paste him on a spot of the, of the background. Adding the shadow as part of the animation to the, to the figure and it makes him stand on the ground instead of float around in the air. This is Mel Allen. This is Hank Greenwald. This is Lon Simmons, and I'm here to bring you all the exciting action. After we create the voice script, it goes to the studio, and one of us suggests what someone like Mel Allen might say in interpreting the script that we've given him. Hello there, everybody. Welcome to Royal Stadium in beautiful Kansas City. Welcome to Veterans Stadium in beautiful Philadelphia. Welcome to Candlestick Park, Three Rivers Stadium, Shea Stadium, Forbes Field. And this is a guy who hung out with Babe Ruth. He did public appearance stuff with Babe Ruth, Mickey Mantle, Joe DiMaggio. During the breaks, we just got him talking, and the stories were incredible. Get out your fans, your blocks of ice, and your parasols, because this one's going to be mighty sticky. Then we take it to Sean and Andy, our video and audio processors. They uh, use some software to put the waveforms on the screen. They cut out the words and phrases that we actually need so they can be glued back together. He's over for one tonight with a run scored. We've been working with Tony constantly refining the game, refining the software, refining the AI. That access we get to a major league manager is an advantage. There's no way to define it. There's no way to quantify it. Larusa has put in so much time and so much effort into making every detail right, and it really shows in the game. Now we're in a position where we can have high-resolution graphics and images and richly detailed animations based on video, ballparks where you can read the stadium signs in the outfield. We can have that to go with the map, and we can have a visual accuracy to go with our mathematical accuracy, and we can give that all to the user. We really want it to be baseball, from the announcers, to the stadiums, to the animations, to the grass. It's a hot game, it's fun to play, there's uh, lots of fun stuff you can do in the game. It's smart, it's got video from Tony La Russa, there's lots of manager details that you can have fun with, and it's authentic. A lot of times I'll be sitting at the ballpark, or I'll be in my office playing a game, and it'll kind of hit me all of a sudden, you know, I'm getting paid to do this. And as a kid, if you had told me, as a 12-year-old, who I was sitting there spending the summers playing paper baseball games and replaying entire seasons, I had 2,000 box scores stacked up in the corner of my room of games I'd played on different baseball board games. And if you had told that 12-year-old kid that 30 years later he'd be making a living designing baseball games, uh, he wouldn't have believed it, because this is a dream.